So now it's time for one of the first measurements that we're going to do on the spectrophotometer. Remember, at the start of each time point, I uh, use my pipetter here to take one mil out of my flask and put it straight into this little cuvette. Um, the purpose of doing that is to detect how many bacteria are present here in the cuvette. So, of course, I'm going to want to wipe it off to make sure there aren't any fingerprints on it. And you'll notice that the cuvette can go in here two ways. Uh, you want to look for the side where there's the little clear window um, going right down the middle here. So the spectrophotometer gets blanked with water, and then you put this in so that, that uh, the light will pass through that clear window. And then you read the OD600. And that's going to give you an indication of how many cells are present in your tube. Of course, over the time that you're doing the, the uh, experiment, the bacteria are going to keep multiplying. So it's important to calculate how many bacteria are in there uh, to get an accurate measurement of the enzyme activity. All right, looking at the clock on the wall, I realized that it's about time for our next time point. It's been about 20 minutes. So I'm going to get my tube B and C uh, with the 20 written on it and get those ready. And I've also got my, uh, my cuvette that's now been emptied out and cleaned. Uh, for testing the concentration of the bacteria. So now I go back to the uh, incubator to get my sample. All right, so I've got my sample, and now I'm going to put one mil in the cuvette, one mil in each of the tubes B and C. I'm going to start my stopwatch again for the reaction time. Close these, mix these up, put them into the heat block here, and then I'm going to take my uh, flask back to put in the incubator. So now we're ready to determine how much of the yellow product was produced in each tube, and that's going to give us an indication of the enzyme activity. Now, I've waited until the whole experiment's done, and I've got all my time points here finished with the stop solution in them. You might have a chance to do some of uh, this step while the reaction is going on, but it's okay to wait until you're finished and then just analyze all the samples quickly. Now, for each time point, remember we have two tubes, one uh, labeled B and one labeled C. The B is the blank, and the C is the one that has the substrate in it. Now, you're going to have to transfer that liquid to these cuvettes uh, for going into the spectrophotometer. However, remember, there's that uh, small amount of chloroform, about 10 mils of chloroform in the bottom of each of these tubes. We don't want to get the chloroform into these cuvettes because it will start to dissolve the cuvettes and it will make the readings not be accurate. So you have to watch this very carefully. I'm going to use my pipetter here and I'm going to pull out approximately 500 mils of this, keeping the pipette tip far away from the uh, little bit of chloroform there at the bottom, and then I'm going to transfer that to my pipette. You can see that it's pretty much filled up to the top of this little window, so about 500 mils is enough for that. Now, this is my blank, so I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to blank the machine. And while I'm doing that, I can get my uh, tube that had the ONPG in it, and transfer that in there. Now the machine's blanked. So I can go ahead and pull this out, put in my ONPG, and then I'm going to read and record the OD. Now it's important to remember also, when we were checking for the number of cells, this was set at 600 nanometers. For checking for that yellow product, it's at 420 nanometers. All right, when this is done, I can dump both of these out. Everything goes into the, uh, the used liquid containers that are here. So I'm going to dump both of these out, and then for the 20 minute time point, I have a new blank and a new uh, test tube.